Hi guys, Dr. Gillard here. Let's do week six lab. This is the start of the cardiology series and it's a pretty easy one today. So follow along. I did a lecture on this material. So watch the lecture first and then come back here and I'll show you some uh, techniques. So part of the cardiac examination was inspection, the first step. So I talked about that in the video. I'm not gonna repeat that here. There's not a lot we can do with that. Uh, palpation, there are two tasks that you have to do in palpation. The first one is the apical impulse. And remember the apical impulse should not be bigger than uh, 2.5 centimeters, about a quarter, 2.4 centimeters. So really it shouldn't be about, it shouldn't be much bigger than your finger really, because your finger can fit in the intercostal space. You should never be able to feel the apical impulse in two intercostal spaces. If the apical impulse is bigger than a quarter, it's positive for left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, which is dangerous, right? It means patients not taking their blood pressure medication probably. All right, so how do you find the apical impulse? So it's in the fifth intercostal space on the left in the midclavicular line. So midclavicular line is right here. It's a line that runs down like this. Okay, you kind of eyeball it. And remember in first quarter when you learn to palpate the intercostal spaces, you can do a peace sign, jugular notch, find the sternal angle of Louis. Okay, this finger is on the sternal angle of Louis. That means the second rib is right here. All right, so second intercostal space is here. Third intercostal space, fourth, fifth. And then if you go over in the midclavicular line, it would be right about there all right now of course don't this is my wife I can do this but if you have a patient make sure they do a soft tissue pull of the breast tissue out of the way for this okay so again peace sign sternal angle of Louis second rib drop down into the second intercostal space walk down it's if you can't feel it it's about a finger pad and a half down the third that's herbs point fourth fifth and then the, the intercostal space runs about like that. Could you take your breast tissue for me, ma'am? Just like this, and then pull it toward this shoulder if you could. Great. And then usually that wire of the bra on females is right where you want to be. And so to palpate the, I'll use the other finger so you can see better. You, you're gonna go in the fifth intercostal space, and I'm dropped down in between the, the ribs here, and I'm feeling for a flicker for the apical impulse. And if you can feel that, awesome. It should not be bigger than the pad of your finger. It also, it should not be way over here, right? If it's outside of the midclavicular line, uh, that also indicates left ventricular hypertrophy. All right, so that's not good. If it's too big, if I can feel it in this intercostal space, go down and check here. I should not be able to feel it down here. If I can feel it in both spaces, it's big. She has left ventricular hypertrophy, which is not good. Got it? So that's step one for palpation. Step two, um, yeah, you can keep doing that for me. Sorry. Your shoulder okay? Okay. Um, so step two for palpation is you want to palpate the precordial area. I talked about that in the video. Uh, so preferably you want to use the metacarpal phalangeal joints because they're very good at feeling vibration. You can also use the finger pads if you will because we're really looking for two things. We're looking for heaves, which I don't think I said in the video, but we talked about heaves or abnormally large impulses that match systole. Uh, so you can feel those with your finger pads quite nicely. But if you're looking for turbulent blood flow, those are called thrills. And the metacarpal phalangeal joints and the palmar surface are very good. They're better at feeling for thrills. For females, because of the breast tissue, really to do it right, you should, so you avoid breast tissue, you should just use the, I guess that would be the medial portion of your fifth metacarpal phalangeal joint. So you would go like this. Uh, if you're asked to palpate the precordial region for turbulent blood flow. Or just if I say palpate the precordial region, what do you do? You go to that picture that I have on the notes and you go here. So we start with the, this is the apical impulse area or the mitral area. I don't feel any turbulent blood flow. What does the thrill feel like? 
Remember from the video, it feels like a cat purring, like it's vibrating. That would be a bad sign of turbulent blood flow. Maybe mitral stenosis down this region. Could be an aneurysm in the heart. But that's what we're feeling for. So apical region, then we're gonna go to the parasternal border, left parasternal, lower border. We're gonna feel this region. Maybe she's got a VSD, ventricular septal defect, uh, or even an atrial septal defect. You could feel a thrill here. I don't feel anything. Now we're gonna go up to the second intercostal space, left parasternal border. That is the pulmonic valve area. Maybe she's got pulmonic valve stenosis. We could feel a thrill here. Then we're gonna go up here to the jugular notch. It's kind of hard to get your finger in here. It's hard for you to see it, but I'm putting this part right here, which is the good vibration sensor. Put it in a right in here. Uh, see if I can feel a carotid artery aneurysm or maybe a dissection um, going on. It might refer pain or refer sound here. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna come down and I, can you cover your other breast tissue? You can let that one go now. So I'm gonna work down the other side. I would be keep using my right hand, but I'll, it's gonna block the camera, so I won't. So we need to do the right second intercostal space. Okay, so that would be the aortic area. Aortic stenosis, you might feel purring here. Then we're gonna go down to the, the right lower sternal border, and I'm going to feel here, ASD or VSD. Uh, could show up here as turbulent blood flow. And then finally, down here at the xiphoid region, I'm gonna put my the metacarpal phalangeal joint fifth one right in here to see if I can feel for an aortic aneurysm. All right, so that's how you percut or how you palpate the precordial space. So we did the apical impulse, really simple. Slide your fingers right there by that bra wire. Right? I do, in the exam, I don't want you to go like this, that it's first quarter stuff and you know, palpate your way down. I want you to jump right to the midclavicular line and put your finger right there. And again, if it's a female, it's right where that bottom of that wire is usually. If it's a guy, their nipple is usually right there. The nipples can vary a little bit, so don't depend on that 100%. But it's usually just down and inside to the nipple is where it is, all right? Okay, so we got that. Uh, to feel for, um, let's see, what else am I missing? Heaves. Okay, we could also, if I ask you to feel for heaves, it's probably better to use the tip of your fingers and you can go to those same areas to feel for heaves. Maybe you can't feel them, but maybe you can feel a pulsation there that you shouldn't feel. Okay, you can hit those same areas for heaves. You can do it like that. Okay, and then, let's see, then we went to percussion. Oh, let me show you, let's go back to the apical impulse. I forgot to show you one position. So if I palpate the apical impulse like this, I might, and I, I might ask you in the exam, can you feel the apical impulse? And you go, no, I can't. Can you demonstrate how you might bring that or accentuate that? How, what's a better chance? Is there a position I can put the patient in to accentuate that apical impulse? And there is. Remember, that's the left lateral decubitus position. Uh, so let's do that on her. Can I have you just roll a little bit on that shoulder? That should be your good shoulder. Okay, great. And then about 45 degrees. You can just kind of put your hands here. Uh, and then, are you able to take your breast tissue again? And pull it up or just kind of cup it there you go and then I can put my fingers in here and again feel for it you can go ahead and move your fingers out of there so they can see okay so I got notice it shifted from here down to here all right so you got about a 66 percent chance of finding it this way remember you can still judge the size of it it shouldn't be bigger than a quarter for sure honestly it shouldn't be bigger than your finger pad because that's all that fits in the intercostal space. And I can actually feel it now. But it is too far to the left. Remember, if the apical impulse moves lateral to the midclavicular line, that's another sign of left ventricular hypertrophy, but it doesn't count because when I put her in this left lateral decubitus position, it shifts the heart over, all right? So that's normal for it to be over here a little bit further. Okay, can I set you back up? Thank you very much. Uh, and I think 
Do I got everything? Okay, now one more thing. I almost hesitate to show you this uh, because I'm not 100% sure it's on boards anymore. Uh, they used to, when I was in school, they used to teach to, to check for left ventricular hypertrophy uh, by percussing the left border of the heart. But the specificity uh, and the positive likelihood ratio is about two. So it's absolutely worthless. But just in case they ask you to do that, um, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to try to come out of the picture. I should be on the other side, uh, but I think my fingers will still be in here. Uh, she, you would have your your patient cover her breast tissue again. Here's her little bra wire right here. So what you would do, and I'm in the wrong position though, you would come percuss. Okay, and that sounds like cardiac dullness to me. Again, if this was a real a patient, have them cover the breast tissue. Okay, I'm just doing that so you can see. It's my wife. I got permission to do that. All right. And then you go down to the fifth intercostal space. You do it in the fourth intercostal space and the fifth intercostal space. You're supposed to mark it where you hit cardiac dullness. Then you take a tape measure and measure it and... And I'm just quoting what they say. If it's greater than 10.5 centimeters, then she has left ventricular hypertrophy. And what if she? What if this is a gigantic guy? It doesn't. It's 10.5 centimeters for everybody, which I think is actually ridiculous. Um, so there you go. I don't think you're going to see that in boards, but that's the way you do that. The right border, forget it. it it's impossible to percuss that because the sternum is there. Uh, you won't hit that one. Okay, and all right, I think that's it. We'll see you in the next video.